let's take a look at reflection and refraction. So these two things, reflection and refraction, happen when a wave is incident upon another medium. What that means is it's going from one medium to another. So I'll draw a diagram to show what I mean by reflection and refraction. And we're going to have an incoming wave represented by an incoming ray and its wave fronts. And when it hits the boundary between the two media, between medium one and medium two, some of that wave could be reflected, which means it's bounced back, it bends back. Um, and that reflected wave will come off this way. Or it could be refracted, which means that it passes into the new medium and is bent. It is broken or fractured. That's what refracted means. Now, in the new medium, it's important to note that the frequency of the wave remains the same, but the wavelength and the wave speed will probably change in the new medium. Let's start out thinking about the reflected ray. There is a law of reflection. And the law of reflection states that the angle of the incident wave is equal to the angle of the reflected wave. Now let's think about what we mean by the angle. Well, theta incident is the angle between the incident ray and a line which is normal to the boundary between the media. So that's a little strange. It's not necessarily the angle that you would think of, but it's the angle between the ray and a line normal to the boundary between the media. Theta reflected is the angle between the reflected ray and a line that's normal to the boundary between the media. So in reflection, those two angles have to be the same. All right. In refraction, it's a little more complicated. In order to deal with that, we're going to need to think about something called the index of refraction. And it's represented by the letter lowercase n which is a little frustrating because n also represents the number of moles, but this is different. In this context, n represents the index of refraction, which is a measure of how the medium interacts with a wave. So every medium, or in every material which waves pass through, has its own n, its own index of refraction. And for electromagnetic waves, the index of refraction is defined as c over v, where c is the electromagnetic wave speed in vacuum, which is the speed of light for electromagnetic waves, and V is the electromagnetic wave speed in the medium. And the index of refraction for air, for example, is approximately equal to 1. For vacuum, it's equal to 1. For water, it's equal to 1.33. For glass, it's approximately 1.5. But what that means is that for all waves, a higher value of the index of refraction means that the wave is moving slower in the medium. And for a lower value of the index of refraction, that means the wave is moving relatively faster in the medium. And that brings us to the law of refraction, which is also known as Snell's law. And that is stated this way. N1 over N2 is equal to sine theta 2 over sine theta 1, which is equal to V1 over V2. So let's take all of that apart. Here's the associated diagram. So you can see where I've defined theta 1 and theta 2, and where medium 1 is and medium 2 is, and where n1 applies and where n2 applies. So note that those angles are measured between the ray and a line perpendicular to the boundary, kind of like in the law of reflection. So Snell's law allows you to relate all of these things. The index of refraction for each of the materials the angle between the normal and the ray for each of the waves, and the speed of the waves in each of the materials. So it allows you to connect all of those ideas in a single law. So let's take an example. Let's say that I have a wave going from medium 1 to medium 2, and let's say that medium 1 has a high index of refraction and medium 2 has a low index of refraction. So the wave comes in, and when it hits the boundary, it has two options. It can reflect and it can refract. And let's say that it does a little bit of each. So some of it reflects and some of it refracts. And it turns out, 
We're not going to show this mathematically, but it turns out that if you go from a high index of refraction to a low index of refraction, when it enters the lower index of refraction, that angle is going to increase. So it's going to bend so that the wave now is further from that perpendicular line. And then let's say we change it a little bit. Let's say that we increase the angle of incidence for the incoming wave. Well, some of it will reflect and some of it will refract. And again, when it refracts, the angle of the refracted ray is going to be larger. Now at a certain point, if you keep increasing the angle of incidence for the incoming ray, at some point that refracted ray is going to be perpendicular. It's not actually going to enter the medium, it's just going to travel along the boundary. When this happens, that's called the critical angle. Because if you increase the angle of incidence past that point, none of the ray or none of the wave is going to pass into the new medium. In that case, the entire wave is reflected and none of it is refracted. If you have an angle of incidence beyond the critical angle, none of the wave enters the new medium, it's all reflected, none of it is refracted. And when that happens, when the entire wave is reflected and none of it enters the new medium, that situation is called total internal reflection because the entire wave is reflected and none passes into the new medium. Now we could also have another situation where we have a wave coming in from a low index of refraction and entering a high index of refraction. In that situation, it's the opposite. Then the angle of the refracted ray is going to be smaller than that of the incident ray. So it's going to bend in the new medium to be closer to that perpendicular line.